On this episode of Industry Relations, Ed Zorn joins the show. Let's go. This is Industry Relations, a podcast that's at the intersection of real estate and technology from an insider's perspective with Rob Hahn and Greg Robertson. Hi, everybody. This is Greg, and I wanted to give a quick shout out to our newest sponsor, CoreLogic. There has never been a time when it's been more crucial for real estate agents to demonstrate their value to their clients. And CoreLogic has all the tools for them to do so. One Home has generated over 17 million uh, unique users who are exploring listing and neighborhood data. Their imitation only client portal has also amassed 2.3 billion listing views and their new photo AI search helps turn clients of visual aspirations into reality. For agents on the go, there's MLS Touch, uh, which is their top rated real estate app in the app store, which gives agents uh, instant access to critical MLS data wherever they are, and also can be branded for collaboration as a client uh, version. Uh, Next up is Realist. Realist gives agents expert level analysis of properties, which helps their clients make smarter decisions and also can help them with their lead generation efforts. All this is underpinned by Matrix, the industry's leading MLS system. Currently, CoreLogic is rolling out Matrix 12, which will have a brand new interface that works perfect for mobile and desktop. Lots of great stuff happening at CoreLogic. Uh, Don't forget an update from your favorite rep, whether that's Rick, Todd, Kim, Lauren, or the rest of the crew, or visit their website. You can look at the link in the show notes. My thanks again for CoreLogic for sponsoring Industry Relations. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Industry Relations with Rob and Greg. This is your co-host, the Notorious Rob, and as always, my fabulous co-host, the fabulous Greg Robertson. What's happening, brother? Oh. <laughs> Are you gone to like? We remember you used to the Ola. Oh. You've gone to like some kung fu thing now. I don't know what's going on. I think it's your weight loss journey is Dude, making oh, you oh, angry. Let me, you know what? Let me just you know? update why we're talking about it. Uh, one pound only. So I'm at minus 6.4. I tweaked my knee and I wasn't doing the afternoon walks. Okay. But, um, you know, I'm, it's, it's, it's going down, which is, I okay. think a good thing, but, uh, uh, and you know what, I will say there's been a lot of people reaching out and thank you so much for, uh, support and everything else. Yep. And this is, it's been good. Yep. So, yeah. So how can I convince you to just do a 72, to, 72 hour water fast? You know, if I've there's got, enough demand from the audience, will no, you, so will you do I, I a 72 do hour that. water sure, fast? Sure, sure. All right. You heard him audience. Please let Greg know that he should do a 72 hour water fast. He will drop 15 pounds. No, no way. doubt about it. No in 72. I, I'm telling you, you're going to drop 15 pounds. Well, it, let's see. 72. That's three, three days. days? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I've got it. I've got a, uh, a colonoscopy next week. So I've got okay. to at least do 24. Right. Um, might as yeah. well wrap it into that, man. I'm yeah, telling you. Might as well you. add two days to that, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's easy. <laughs> it's real easy. 72 hours, <laughs> you'll be down 10, at yeah. least 10 pounds. Oh, so okay. you heard the man. Respond in the comments, especially on YouTube, or send him or me or email. We'll and have to time it where if I do it, the end will be at 10 a.m., you know, uh, on Friday at 10 a.m. when we record. Uh, and I have that cheeseburger. <laughs> and you going to be eating. <laughs> All right. As always, uh, you know, we're not a health and fitness uh, podcast because the two of us would be like the worst possible host for that podcast. But we are a real estate podcast. And uh, we actually have a really special guest with us today because last, last episode, remember, we said, look, uh, you know, if there's someone's willing to come on and like, Tell me specifically how I'm wrong, because uh, I'm sure I am. Uh, and we have someone who answered the call. I would like to bring him on now. It's Mr. Ed Zorn, the world famous <laughs> <laughs> MLS attorney, uh, general counsel of CRMLS. And I was asked by Ed to point out that he was not the friend who sent me that email. <laughs> True, we might be friends, but I wasn't that friend. <laughs> we are friends. And you do disagree with me and tell me how I'm wrong often, but you are not the guy who sent that email. I just want to make that 100% clear. Um, but so, Ed, thanks for thanks again for taking yeah, the time. Welcome to the to Octagon, Ed. <laughs> sure, yeah, but I appreciate coming back on and seeing you guys. Before we get started with this, I just want to like, I mean, Ed's like, you're like, this whole lawsuit settlement, 
you know, this has kind of brought up your celebrity in the industry. I mean, it's, I mean, no what, what are you doing with all the women now? And, you know, all the <laughs> fame and the fortune and I mean, yeah, how, how are you handling like, that? Well, I know a lot of times it, it can be rough for people to be, pro oh, be propelled Greg, I, into this fame. Greg, and you should else. be the one advising him how to handle the, all the women <laughs> and the fame because, you know, you're the fabulous Greg Robertson. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I'm looking forward to the days when, when at a conference I can go back to the back of the line, the last day when everyone's at the lobby bar and talk about some meaningless copy right thing that nobody cares about <laughs> um, you know, I do look back to those days and get the lawyers off the stage exactly um, from at the beginning of conferences <laughs> <laughs> all right so um i think we might as well begin there because i mean you mentioned you read my post where i said i think i'm wrong you know um so you, i'm looking forward to having you educate me in all the ways i'm wrong however before that let's just start with kind of the high level top thing. And again, I don't know if you've spoken to any of the people involved. I'll just kind of ask your opinion. My big thing was, I think there's a disconnect between NAR's understanding of what the settlement allows and does not allow and what other lawyers think it allows and doesn't allow. I mean, what's your take on that? Is there a disconnect or no? I, I do probably think there is some disconnect and that's always going to happen when you have different people with varying opinions trying to interpret the same document. And I think one of the things that's very, very common is people start to lose the context of the framework of the agreement. So mm -hmm. what happens when you settle these kind of big cases is everybody's in a room, they're hyper-focused on issue after issue after issue, everybody in the room. And by the way, this, these meetings are probably, probably went on for months right. with multiple sessions so, so they just kind of keep narrowing down and they have the context in mind as they start to craft this specific language. Agreement gets made. Agreement gets now seen by people who are not involved in kind of the road that wound through to get to where the resolution is. Mm -hmm. And then people start taking a piece here, a piece there, and trying to put an interpretation in what's in essence a 103 page document sure. by looking at two or three sentences. Sure. And I think a lot of the banter back and forth is kind of subject to that. And so I think putting context back into the agreement might help clarify um, you know, what some of these points are. Okay. So let's put the context back in. And like I said, I was surprised, right? And the thing where I was wrong potentially is I'm, because I still think I'm right about this, but maybe I'm not, right? Based on the language of settlement, I think offers of co compensation off of the MLS is okay. And advertising that offer of compensation on your own listings, on your own website, appears to be okay under the settlement. The other side is like, no, it's not because the language is shall not uh, be violated by or is not prohibited by. Well, give me your take on it. So, so my take is probably a little bit more nuanced in between those two extreme points. Okay. okay. So the first thing I think you have to realize is when you look at paragraph 58, which has the list of items, that's a paragraph that's applicable to NAR. These are right. things NAR has to do. The right. MLSs have a corresponding paragraph. It's paragraph 68. And right. it has most of the same things on the list. Now, when you start talking, and this is where I think people make a mistake, is they start looking at that entire list, and that now applies to the real tours, to individual brokers and agents, and it does not. If you look at the released parties section of the agreement, what you will see is that the released parties, when it talks about real tours, so your, your boot on the street agent and the broker, yep. okay, it limits the release, the practice changes that they have to follow specifically to paragraph 58, section six through 10. Okay. So the other ones, like including the ones you guys were debating on, are not subject to be followed by the individual members, right? What six through 10 are, Again, these, this is the section that applies to individual realtors to be covered by the release. So what that means in context is if a realtor or a broker or agent fails to embark on or do these, these specific couple of practice changes, then you're not covered by the release and you're subject to liability. And when they talk about catch marks saying, hey, we're watching over the settlement agreement, making sure you're complying, that's the sections that, that those plaintiff lawyers by written agreement have the right to go after. And here's here are those sections. You were saying six through ten 
are. Six through 10. Okay. Correct. It's items six through 10. Okay. Par- paragraph six is the requirement to have a buyer representation agreement before you show a property. So that's applicable to you. So I know Robin passed uh, my throw the phone out the window when I'm listening to Rob speak uh, moments <laughs> was when you said, hey, just go ahead and do it. Don't follow it. Yeah. You realize if, if a the plaintiff lawyer's have evidence of you showing properties without the proper agreement meeting these requirements, then you are not covered by this release and you can be subject for liability for the last four years of damages allegedly, right? So, so there's, a, th- there's a compliance component where it's not left up only to the MLSs to enforce that rule. That rule applies if a realtor or the broker for that realtor want to be get the advantages of the release, okay? So that's one, buy a rep agreement before showing. The second is, um, that you can't represent that your brokerage services are free. That's already mm-hmm. existing code of ethics. It's already an MLS yep, rule. Yep. So nothing really new there. Uh, number eight is that you have to disclose to the sellers and obtain seller approval for any payment. Listen to these words or offer of payment that the listing broker or seller will make to another broker agent or other represented acting for the buyers. Mm-hmm. So in my mind, to say that the settlement agreement prohibits all offers of compensation is not accurate, when in this exact section, they put in the agreement specific rules about if there's going to be an offer of compensation, here's an additional rule you have to follow. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. So I think that, that, that supports mm-hmm. more, I think, your perspective right. you know, in, in that analysis. Um, now, before you continue, though, I mean, that's the state today. In other words, that was the state of, of, re, of the universe in like 2018, because every listing agreement would have in writing, the offer of compensation is this, the seller has to agree to that, right? Well, not necessarily. I had seen some listing agreements where it would say something like uh, the listing broker will share compensation consistent with the listing broker's office policies or policies, oh, okay. Okay. right? So maybe it, I don't think it necessarily had to be specified. I think it was better practice to, and right. I think good realtor association forms had a space to right. put an actual number, but right. I don't think there was anything that made that, you know, mandatory. Maybe it's like the Trek forms that I'm used to. It was always right. like very clear, very like, you know, offer 2.5%, 3% or whatever, and I'm like, yeah, and seller has to agree to that. That's part of the listing agreement. <laughs> so it right. doesn't feel like this part is not some sort of major practice change. And I think listing agents are used to just sitting down with the seller. Here's how things work. Mm-hmm. I charge you this. We're going to offer this compensation. Right. And then maybe the, and then you get into the steering thing, right? It's like, well, I don't want to pay the compensation, but sir, if you don't, then here's what's going to happen. Right. Right. Well, it's okay, steering. But isn't that a, that's in the past. Fiduciary, fiduciary responsibility though, Rob? Okay. It is for the listing agent, but it depends, like I said, to me, either when you're trying to convince them or just inform them, that that's a whole separate thing. But I'm just pointing out this particular section is not dramatically different not at all. than what listing agents have been doing. Okay, I just want Correct. to make that clear. I, I think right. the vast majority of listing agents probably have already been doing this for Correct. years. Correct, right, years. Yes. right. Okay, um, so next. So next, nine, um, that... <laughs> In your agreements, both buyer and listing side, you have to indicate that broker commissions are not set by law and are fully negotiable, Mm -hmm. right? So now we're attacking that fear of steering kind of issue component. And then 10 is no filtering of MLS listings by offers of compensation. This one's interesting to me in, in that I think this was anticipating the future. Right. What happens if you have a new MLS that decides to do this that doesn't exist today that's not subject to this or a broker operated MLS or a, a non opting in MLS that still sure. wants to try to do this? Sure. They can at the MLS level because they're not subject to the agreement. But you as an individual realtor and brokerage firm that want to avail yourselves to the benefits of this release, you're agreeing that if for some reason you're using an MLS that has offers of compensation still in them, that you will not sort or filter um, those listings by compensation. So, so those are the sections that apply as far as specific practice changes to individual realtors on the agreement. Okay. And then I think where people start to get a, a foul when you start quoting the language 
about what the practice changes in 58 shall not prevent that language. Mm -hmm. Realize yeah. the context here is in both paragraph 58 for NAR, paragraph 68 for MLSs, there are an affirmative, you know, 12 or 13 paragraphs of what we have to do as MLSs to comply and get this release. Right. I have to change some rules. Some of them have to do with licensing issues. Some of them involve more technology, such as remove a field. Other ones deal more with rules and regulation, making sure you, you know, get a buyer rep agreement before you show a property. Right. Sure. I put that in my rate. Right. So sure. there's these 13 things I have to affirmatively do in the affirmative. To me, the next paragraph that everyone focuses on and it's why 13. I say it's out of context is it's the guardrails for NAR and the MLS. Right. Make sure we don't go too far. And what I mean by that is as a multiple listing service, we can engage in antitrust behavior if we go beyond the scope of what our operation of a broker cooperative is and get into regulating business practice that have nothing to do with our with our business. OK, sure. and I think this is where your your lawyer friend was kind of going, you know, where I kind of agreed with some of those arguments that they had laid out. So realize the. When you get to the practice changes in this paragraph, right, shall not a prevent offers of compensation to buyer brokers or other buyer representatives off the multiple listing service. What that's saying to me is an MLS, like, hey, don't be lazy, Ed, when you craft CRMLS's rules, right? Um, you have to make a rule tailored to implementing these 13 practice changes, we said, but you can't just say no one can ever right? No broker can ever offer compensation ever to anybody else, right? That's overbroad. And that would get me and CRMLS potentially into some antitrust trouble if we made a rule that was that broad, that crossed over into some le legitimate branch. I know with that grin, you're going to NAR might be able to do something with regard to the code of ethics. Um, and I, I'm not going to disagree with you on the code of ethics. I can tell you as a multiple listing service, though, we mm -hmm. have to be open at CRMLS, especially, right? We're open to non-realtors, right? So we're not going to go that. So, so I just mm -hmm. think from a perspective of context that where this section exists, right? It, it, it's, it's specifically a prevention of, of the MLS writing a rule that says we're not going to go this far, okay? And I think that sometimes gets... Okay. lost in the conversation. And, sure. and I would argue even as a code of ethics issue, NAR may have some challenges in trying to enforce I, it. I think that was, I think that was negotiated specifically in that fashion. So the thing I guess, I, okay, fine. So you're right. It's all contextual. Bottom line, can a broker offer compensation off the MLS and not get sued? Well, I'm going to say, if he's complying with 6 through 10, anybody. okay, he's, he's complying with 6 through 10, like you said, that's the part that applies to individuals, right? So brokers in compliance with 6 through 10, talks to the seller, discloses everything, does all that, offers compensation off the MLS. Is the broker going to get sued? So it, it, the classic lawyer answer, right, um, is, is it depends on on... The, the suit, remember, has to be an antitrust violation, which requires, and in fact, I, I pulled it because it's easier to, to talk with actual documents. This is sure. this is the statement. This is the jury instruction number 23 from the Citizen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I when, <love> that. <laughs> the, when the judge is describing to the jury yep. what is a conspiracy, right? Did yep. you find a conspiracy? And has phrases like this. There needs to be an agreement or understanding between two or more persons that exists when they share a commitment to a common scheme. So here's going to be my, my depends on your question, Rob. Is there a common scheme? Is there a group of brokers together, like maybe a committee that sits around and designing a form yep, yep. that vote 15 in favor, five against to have a commission sharing offer of compensation model and then 85 or 90 percent of the industry uses that form right that's going to have a very different answer to me than one where i'm ed zorn realty i'm a three-man brokerage firm i do my own thing i decide with my own seller this is the way i want to run my business i'm not going to yep. use anybody else's form i don't care what any other broker in town does doesn't matter to me at all i'm going to 
tried in getting a listing from Greg, my client, I'm going to use this technique to try to, to tell Greg why I'm a good agent and I share commissions sure. and, and that's a good strategy he should engage in. And I go ahead and do that. I'm going to tell you, I don't see liability for that. I, I mean, I to me, to me, what it is, is they, it's because, a bad of the, because though, of it's, the, not a bad, it's not a good practice though. It's, yeah, it's not mean, a good thing to do. And it's not effective, but yeah. go ahead, Greg. Sorry. Yeah. So to me, yeah. it's 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 exactly what you're saying a little bit. It's like with the national case with Citra Burnett, you know, they had the MLS rules. They had, you know, everybody was part of this and you were forced to do this, right? So it's like they could point at something, yeah, there's something here. But if they even if even if even if it's correct that yes, they can go sue them, it's just a weaker case. It's a very harder case to kind of bring against. So to me, even if it is like, yeah, black and white, they can go sue. Well, yeah, try proving that though. Try, try. It's not going to be, a, it's not going to be two hours in the jury room. They come back and slam, right? It, it's going to be very difficult for anybody to go in, I think, and prove that. So, so if, if that's the case, are we, are we kind of, is this much to but, do about nothing? I no, mean, it's really? not, Greg. Greg, here's what I'm getting at. My frustration at this point is I, I understand what I just said and it makes sense to me. Okay. And like, oh, okay, I was wrong about my interpretation, six through 10, blah, blah. Here's the thing. At the end of the day, nobody cares. And it's not important whether Rob is right or wrong. Nobody actually cares whether Ed Zorn's interpretation is, you know what I mean? Like wh what really matters is, okay, we have the settlement. There's like dates in place, like practice changes have to happen by whatever. And then people have to implement these things. I'm saying, I think brokers and agents on the ground, otherwise smart people, I don't think they know what the rules are and what they have to follow in order not to get sued. What I'm saying is that therefore, and I think you've done a better job explaining this, here's my preference, would be if you were like, if right now as you're speaking, if Katie Jones was over your right shoulder and Michael Kitchmark was over your left shoulder saying, yeah, he's right. This is the rules, guys. Here's what you have to do to not but, but be all, liable. But all Ed did was read read the document. It's in the document. Are we, Dude, do, are we, do we have to spoon Greg, feed everything to everybody? Greg, now? when Kevin Sears goes and makes a video saying, oh, the offer compensation is fine and the members are going to figure out how to communicate it, I'm saying there's a disconnect somewhere. I, I don't know. I, I mean, on one level, you could say it's it's a settlement, but it's 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 you know it's lawyers. Uh, is anybody ever going to think that you know they're they're a hundred percent scot free on anything? I mean, what what do you have to do to? Is there is there any agreement you could write that is going to be so watertight that? Yeah, then this is then fine. But if you're going to take that approach, then the rules are meaningless, right? Like rules could be whatever, crystal clear. But you're still going to get sued. So you know whether oh, you, you obey could, it or not, you're still you going to get sued. You I'm could. saying brokers and agents want to know what do I have to do. To avoid liability, and, and they and they'll and, and Ed just limed it out. It's in the no. agreement. Yeah. Well, no. I, so is is it's an offer of compensation will make you liable? Yes or no? It's, I think there's a risk. He's saying there's. A, I mean, I'm right. putting words. On, there's a risk of it, but the yeah. risk is is so much. Not, that, it's uh, not that big of a deal that it's yeah. not okay, something that, that a normal in the normal course of. Then I mean, Greg, there's a, that. hold on, hold on. Every day, I mean, you know, I've run businesses, and there's always a risk of doing this or that. You make some things like. Well, yes. I mean, that's a line there. Could we get? Is there, could we run into a foul there? Well, that's not our intent here. I think you know, you know, if you had to follow everything in the world, yeah, every you could get sued for walking down the fucking street, man. I mean, and it's, it is all about risk. It, it's it is about managing risk. And and Rob, you you went through law school, right? Yeah. There is no black and white. It's all a various shade of gray, and there are various risks for different actions, right? So, is there a greater risk? if you offer compensation and engage in, in commission sharing, then if you do not. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I can, I'll answer that one. Yes. No. Yes. There's definitely a greater risk than if you don't. My argument is why would you do it? There's no reason to, to share commission. It's a silly practice. The minute you combine things with the other practice change, that's the other little bit of a frustration is what we do sometimes is we nitpick and we take one provision of 15 out and look at it by itself. And again, we lose the context. You know, I'll tell it, you why, why I think this is relevant. Why it's it, let's, why would you do it? It's because human beings are not computer code. And we have a hundred years of culture, a hundred years. We have 1.4 or 5 million realtors who are, this is the way they have done business for 50 years. 
what you're talking about is going to require some enormous number of years of education and cultural shift. So, or they can change I'm, the form. We're going to get to the form shortly. But my point is like, if the reason to do it is because this is the way that every buyer agent in my, in my MLS, in my area does things. So it makes it easier for me to do a deal. And I agree with you. And I think that would, what, what you're going down, the road you're going down, Rob, with the culture, this is the easy way to do it. These yeah. are all arguments that a future plaintiff is going to lay out. Oh, that sure. If the, if the, if whatever the industry does, whatever that means, right, whatever that group of people with influence do, to the extent that it holds on to a commission sharing structure, which still provides the opportunity to argue in a living room of a seller, the fear of steering, there right. is a risk of future liability. It is right. the fear and, right. of steering. Even if the right. steering never happens, which right. probably hasn't happened in a decade, it's the fear of steering in the in the living room of the seller right. that creates the liability. So whatever the industry does as a group or a group of brokers with a similar understanding right. to, to encourage or keep that fear of steering concept you increase the risk. But uh, so, no, I get you, Ed. My point is this. If we have a culture of a, over 100 years like that, right, then at a minimum, if you're going to try and change that through education and whatever, I'm saying I think NAR and the plaintiff's lawyers should get together and make it crystal effing clear what the rules are. Now, to your point, you get the rules, whatever, there's greater risk, lesser risk, and lawyers are always going to do that. <laughs> it kind of depends. But I get it. But most people are not lawyers. So what they need is, it's kind of like drug laws. If you do heroin, you're going to jail. Is that 100% certain? No, because you have to get caught. They have to prove that you did it. Like, okay, but you know what? The law is pretty clear. Heroin, <laughs> schedule one narcotic, don't do it. Versus this other thing, eh, I'm saying let's make it if you offer compensation, 100% no good. Or offer compensation, as long as it's off the MLS, 100% fine. I, think, I what, think they should make that clear is all I'm getting at. I, I, don't, I don't disagree with you. I think there's a hesitation on the NAR side that is rational of what they're doing. And that is they're getting hammered by the Department of Justice, by plaintiff's attorneys for doing what? Telling brokers how to run a business. So realize that's a... While it's an easy mm -hmm. thing to say, let's just tell them the exact way to do it. Realize that's also what created a ton of liability. So that okay. has a certain risk profile to it as well. I, I'm just explaining to you why. Oh, no, I, I get the, you, Ed, but, but by that token, when Kevin Sears goes and says, hey, compensation is totally fine and my member is going to find ways to communicate it, you're telling me that's – like once that statement is out there, right? And, and I'm saying this because I do speak to brokers and agents constantly, and what I'm hearing from them is, we'll just offer compensation off the MLS. No, I, I don't disagree with you. If that's wrong, then it is incumbent on NAR to come and correct the record. It's, it's, there's a risk. I don't know if it's wrong. It's just there's, you're increasing your risk if you do that, right? I'm saying the brokers agents think this is 100% allowed, which was my interpretation. As long as I do it off the MLS, this is 100% allowed. And Kevin Sears just told me, we can figure out a way to communicate it. Okay. It, if you're saying allowed, it's risk free. That is a bad message. It is not risk free. And my point then is, and right. we're doing this on this podcast because right. of all right. We're gonna we're gonna move on. So I, I just want there to be agreement between the three of us that I think NAR and the plaintiff's attorneys jointly should make this really clear for everybody. Really clear, like a safe harbor. What's you know, like there's always risk. Give me give the brokers and agents a safe harbor. Don't right. share commission. Then that's then that needs to be the message. Yeah. Period. End of story. And, and and realize the reason that's a good answer today, where it wasn't before, is because of the other practice changes. Right. Because of the mandatory buyer representation agreement, where there is a fee being established at the very beginning of the relationship. Yeah. 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 Right? That can't be lost. So so there is a number now that's out there that reduces the fear of steering component. Because no, it doesn't. Oh, sure it, really. does. No, sure, it doesn't. Does. No, yeah, it doesn't. Does. Oh, yeah, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Okay, we yeah. could argue about that. We, we will when we get to con concessions of why that's. But a that's the, the next the piece of this, right? Um, <laughs> so now the move that the MLS have made generally, and I think you've been, 
you were involved with it. So it's the move to concessions field. So tell me about that because okay, you know well, my well, opinion. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, I mean, go ahead. So is is I mean I I don't know. I mean, is that being widely adopted? Because I'm hearing otherwise. I'm hearing some MLSs don't want to go down that path. Or, or I mean, if you look at the top twenty five MLSs, Ed, how many would you say are going to go this concessions route in some flavor? You know, I don't know. I, I think it's the same risk analysis. Right? It, it is they're 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 weighing risk versus reward yeah. in Rob's argument, right? That this is just some kind of replacement for the concessions of some kind of replacement for like the commission, which is that's absolutely not. It, it is a it is a difference with a very substantial distinction to it. No, sorry, man. No, okay. no one to, sees it that way. I, I think MLS lawyers might see it that way. I think okay, well, in the real world, that's not. I think the data it. says it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, so by the way, CRMLS started down this road back in September of 2023, before the trial. And what we were, as we were kind of looking at, and as you know, Art Carter with his leadership and forethought pushes us as staff, hey, I want all kinds of contingencies. What could happen with all these different things? And in that process, we, we, we got ready for a world without commission. And so we started looking at what does that look like all the way back in 2021, 2022. And so as we started looking at that, we started looking at this, um, this concession concept. And what we discovered was at CRMLS, we track concessions on closed listings. So it's a mandatory field. When you close out a listing from pending to closed, you have to put the dollar amount of any seller paid concessions. And there's a text box where you can describe what that is, right? What we found is in 2023, 40% of our closed listings had concessions. And I thought, that's strange. So I went back and I tried to do some, some word searches inside of agent comments, right? You know, things like seller pay, concession, you know, loan point in, in the agent comments. And it was very difficult to do, but I came up with between arguably 12 to 14% of our active listings um, in September of 2023, had some kind of comment in the field expressing the seller's willingness to share a, a concession. Hold on, okay. in the active listings, I thought this was only filled active. out during the close. The, no, no, I thought there was the only filled out. Field, the concession field we have in place and had for years is on closed. What I did is I went back to a search in active listings under agent comments, comments, comments to okay, see sorry. if you. people were trying to. Um, convey and and use the field to market the seller's willingness to do a concession. And we found that in 12 to 15%, it was just hard to do because you had to do word searches. So I can't be convinced I picked all of them so up. So Lamborghini in the garage is yours if, you know. <laughs> right. right. And they were usually things with loan points. Remember, especially in 2023, right? There were usually yeah. things about loan points, paying closing costs, title escrow fees, things of this nature. And so let's be honest, right? Is there any other field where we have 40% usage of something that happens in a transaction and we don't have a listing side field to market that with? That was kind of silly, right? We have fields well, you that- did. Right, you, you did, you know, did. It was agent comments. It was just rolled in agent comments, right? Right, it was. It was, it, it, And it, so it was very hard to track, very hard to see. And so we put a task force together of our rules committee, again, before the trial ever happened to start looking at rolling concessions out as a usable mechanism for the seller to be able to create an incentive for the buyer. And here's the big distinction. The concession is an incentive to the buyer where compensation is limited to one use, which only favors the buyer's agent, which is what brings that fear of steering into play. Okay. So when we have a, we have 40%, use of concessions. By the way, I did the research into FHA. So I looked into the County of Riverside for FHA deals in May of 2023, because I wanted to look at all the, the details, right? 64% of our closed transactions in May of 2023 in Riverside County with an FHA loan had a concession. And, I, and what that number was, Rob, 1.8%. Okay. It was almost as much as what those same listings offer to pay the buyer's agent. It was almost 50-50. Okay. Okay, so here's a very robust used field, right, or, or feature that is actually part of transactions that we're not letting sellers communicate, right? Time and out. so- Wait, Ed, so that 64%, the 1.8, yeah. 
in concessions. This is back when compensation still was the rule. Yes. Yes. So, so, so that's none of this over was compensation. And above compensation. Correct. Okay. Correct. There's still an offer of compensation, which was a little over the 1.8. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. So in the transactions that closed in Riverside County in May right. of 2023, right. the seller was paying right. close to 4% of the buyer's costs. But the 1.8% then was the result of some sort of negotiate that had nothing to do with compensation. It was in the active vis- listing. It was, it was in, in, put in the agent remarks of an no, active I, listing. I, so this is I before the negotiation. I thought what it said was just closed. No, it was closed, Greg. It was closed listing. Oh, okay. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Right. And, and so yeah. the vast majority were closing costs. Right. Right. But but lots of them were loan bo- buy down points. Sure. Some of them were repairs. Sure. A number were term specifically for term. Sure. Sure. Right. No Lamborghinis, so, though, huh? Not in Riverside. You know. <laughs> Probably not in Riverside. I'm just thinking. OK. <laughs> right. So your point then is what? Like that concessions field is just totally legit and 100 percent cool. Correct. Now, when you I, I think I think the the abuse. Remember, the goal here is to, to stop steering. That's the goal. Right. 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 And what we don't want to do is throw the baby out with the bathwater. There is a benefit in buyer agents and buyers knowing, Mm -hmm. right. Hey, this particular list price, what part of that list price is the seller willing to give over to the buyer to help the buyer buy that house versus a different house? Right. Okay. And so when you combine the concession field, with the opportunity for paying escrow and title fees and loan points and repairs and buyer broker compensation, right? The way we've designed the field is you don't get to specify any of it, none of it. There's no text field. It's a right. single number. Right. And the idea here is as a buyer's agent, remember, we're the, the MLS is a broker cooperative. We exist to help put transactions together to make it smoother. So as a buyer's agent, if I'm representing Greg in buying a home and Rob, you've got a home listed, I just I don't need help from you, Rob, to tell me how my buyer needs to spend money that your seller is willing to incentivize to my buyer to come to his house. Mm -hmm. Let me do it. Right. Because because I may have a buyer that is got three 1099s a year, has a bankruptcy. So his loan is a catastrophe. Right. But he's got all kinds of cash. So he's going to look at a concession and go, I want to use 100% of those concession dollars that the seller's offering, and I want to put all of it to, to a loan buy-down program. Sure. No, that's that's the logic I've heard. What right. I'm questioning is why would you ever put a number there? Especially with What the is the point, point of putting a number other than encouraging steering? So, so when you say steering, you have to remember steering who? Somebody is driving the bus. No, right. no. I, I have every right as a seller, and this now gets to the constitutional issue, I think, that MLS yeah, paid yeah, yeah. and they yeah, did an the excellent first job right. Right, sure, in that sure, case sure, sure. of explaining this, right? Sure. Go back to 2010, 2011, right? Or no, even now. Ed, I, 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 I know what you're going to say. What I'm saying is you're very open. Like, why have a field is what I'm getting at. If it's simply... And put it into the comments. Put it into the public comments. Seller is going to be generous concessions. Just make it why a field. Why have a field? The field makes it easier to, to search. No, it makes it, it makes it easy for me to regulate, Rob. Because How does it make it easier to regulate? The, the you can't define what it's says, used for. No, the settlement agreement specifically says right. it can't be conditioned. Right. So if we leave it to agent comments, you know what I'm right. going to get a hundred of? What? Yeah. Offer of compensation to the buyer's agent at X percent. Okay. If I make it a field with but that's no spend, text right? box... So what yeah. happens if they do it today? It's already offer compensation on the MLS is no good. If someone puts into the comments field offer of compensation three percent, you guys would have to find it Absolutely. and discipline it, right? Absolutely. Okay, so it's the they same have thing. a lot less of that. We have a whole lot less of that. So this is an it's admin read. The reason you're doing this is that, for that, administration. Yeah. No, I, I, but here's my thing. I, I, I guess what I was looking at is if the goal is to avoid steering, there's no reason whatsoever to put a number in that field. I, I'm going to avoid steering, Rob. There is a reason. There, there's a reason in that the seller has absolutely every right to incentivize a buyer, not the buyer's agent, a buyer okay. to come to his house instead Put of Put it into the description. Guy. No, the, 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 so I can tell you've never done compliance on a multiple listing service and you don't have a <laughs> that, contract. That is true, those. yeah. That's yeah. clear, right? Yeah. <laughs> because, because regulating business rules, meaning using the technology as yeah. a mechanism of, of how people follow rules is, is much more precise 
much easier, less staff time than what you're suggesting. Okay. But th- this comes okay, down so, so to So there's like, a practical okay. reason based on experience of why the commission or it, yeah. the, the concession field can include uh, something. I think the other big distinction, Rob, is that in a concession field, different than offer of comp, it has to be separately negotiated in the contract. So let me give you an example. Sure. If, by the time you get to the contract stage, my point is, right. why would you disclose it before you get to the offer? Because I want to incentivize a buyer a buyer to come to my house instead of the four other houses that are listed. Okay, so if you have it in the field, then it's going to show up on Zillow? Yeah, it's going to be, okay. it, is, it will be active in IDX. Absolutely. And, and simply just saying, that anybody who does compensation display, considered, because that's the default, right? right? So let me give you this other scenario, right? I sure. use this one as another example of why this matters. My wife, Cinnamon. Yeah. She is brilliant when it comes to valuing property. She, her dad was an appraiser. She grew up sure. in real estate. She has no license. If something happens to me and she needs to go buy a home, she doesn't need help. Okay. And trust me, you're going to lose any negotiation you try to do. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> so sounds so like somebody has been there. What she needs huh? is someone to open the door and and put into the number what she wants. Why should she be denied the opportunity to leverage the fact that a seller is willing to take some portion of the list price, X percent? And and let a buyer use that to get into the property. No, no, I get it. Ed. want to use that Ed, to pay let, an agent. So fine. Why let, can't let, my wife fine. use that to drop it? I know. Cool. That's fine. Here's my question: Three years from now, okay, the concession field, ninety-seven percent of them say sellers offering two point five percent concession. It won't happen, Rob, because I can tell you, I already know that's not going to happen. Because on FHA loans, I already have. You're going to see concessions be higher than what the what the buyer representation amount. Uh, see, this is a Peter, but I don't get. So, when you put a number or percentage in the concessions field, is the seller now prohibited from giving more after negotiation? Sure, they can. Of course, yeah, they we're can. We're going to track that so, back. So, right. So, my yeah. my point is that at the closing, after closing, the concessions field is going to look like four percent. To your point, as FHA, right? I'm saying up front as an active listing. I'm just asking, what 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 happens then when 97% of them say 2.5%? There's no point in the steering at that point, Rob. Here's why. There's the, so much point in the, the buyer steering. Buyer rep agreement, okay? Because and my buyer rep agreement says 2.5%. Okay, and 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 so okay, so so we'll use your number, okay? Sure. And I have an FHA condo in yeah. Riverside County. Yeah. And there's six in the development, and okay. I want to be the next one. And I know okay. FHA allows up to six percent of other closing costs. So I'm okay. going to put in that box five, I'm going to put in that box 6% because I okay. want the next buyer to buy my house. Okay. Now that buyer might come along with only a 2% or two and a half percent share. Right. And he gets to use the other part. Why can't I as a seller constitutionally not have the right to market my property the way I want to? Which is whatever, yeah, no, that, that part's fine. If you pay me this amount, so I'll give you I, a, I'll What give you I'm notes. saying though, is you're ignoring the culture that exists in the, in the industry today. What I'm saying is by creating a field, right? All you're doing is moving compensation to concessions field. We're not, Rob. It's, it's, it's going to be used. And you know what? So this is so like the, I said, the hypothetical is three years from now, 97% of concessions field says 2.5%. So, so let, me give you, let me give you the example then, Rob. So, so yeah. the concession field says two and a half. Yeah. I do deals as a buyer's agent at one. Yeah. Okay. So Rob, I'm, I'm, I'm representing Greg. And Greg, ground me down the way everybody wants. Yep. We're going to yep. negotiate. And and Greg, you know, I trust you. You look like you'll be a good good guy to work with. I will do it for one and a half. Now, your concession field, Rob, says two and a half in it. Yep. So I go to Greg and go, Greg, look, my agreement is capped at one and a half. That's right. Uh, Rob's got a nice property there. It, it's two and, and a half. half. Greg, yep. what do you want to do with the other, other 1%? We right. can apply it to your loan. We can apply it to escrow title. We can lower the price by a percent. Or right. Greg, you know what? I heard there might be some other offers. Remember sure, we were that, there. Well, Let's leave it okay. in for, for the Ed, seller. Ed, what happens when it says zero? Rob's property offers zero concessions. Okay. So, so no I go concession to Greg, offered. Okay, so you're a zero on an FHA loan. Right. Okay, so I go to Concessions Greg, offered up front. That's right. Right. So and you go to Greg and say, "Don't look at that house." Not at all. They offer you, oh, or you say, "We're going to we're going to make an offer and negotiate it." Right. Correct. I'm going to show uh, Greg. This is this is my pitch to Greg. Right. Greg, you and I are, we, we use this one and a half number, so we'll stay with it. I, I, I work for you, Greg, at one and a half. Yep. Um, and 
I'm going to show you any property you want to see, and we're putting an offer on any property you see. Exactly. Some people might offer a concession. Some might. I don't really care. Exactly. Exactly. Right? I'm going to put an offer in, and if they if it doesn't have an offer con concession, doesn't matter. I'm still making the offer anyway. That's and I'm right. still going to ask for the fee and the things that you need, Greg, in that. In fact, That's Rob, right. I think this could be a technique. I'll be honest with you. Oh, so there's one a million technique techniques see, to use this. The, to oh, use course, it for sure. Of go course. to a buyer's, and, and what, a buyer's what agent, I mean, again, and I don't think that there's going to be that many agents, seller's agents that are going to like, why would you tell your agent or your, your seller to offer nothing? I mean, you're just limiting the number of offers you're going to get, I think. I, I think I would, I, the, what I'm saying is I don't see why I would ever disclose like any of that up front. I was like, make an offer. Then don't. You, right, you don't, right, exactly. You don't. But the problem is by not offering it, but the MLS has a concessions field, guess what? Now the steering, now agents start avoiding my, my home. They, they That's what I'm getting at. What I'm getting at is 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 the concept of steering the way you just described it on the yeah. buyer's agent side is crap. Let's just be honest. Uh, it it I doesn't don't, happen. I don't. Right? Where, where's the Where's the study that's showing that? I've been Emma, waiting Bright for that just study. Bright what? just did one. Uh, Bright did when? a study on steering and how it doesn't happen. It's very detailed. Uh, their economist did it. It's an excellent study. Go take a look at it. Okay, I'll take a look at it. Right. I missed it because no one saw it. Like I. Yeah. No, it, okay. it, 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 it just, it's also common sense, right? So, so, so Rob, I'm representing you and Sonny and you see a house on, on one of these portals that you really like, and she loves the kitchen and you want to go look at it. And I go, ah, you know, Rob, I really don't think that's what you and Sonny want. Seriously. How fast do you go to another agent? Uh, like and I said, I think, yeah. no, yeah. I, I think I trust you. So, oh, here we go. You have a link. All right, bright article, yeah. fact or fiction. So, so, anyway, all right, listen. Let me, hold on. Let me let me make one point though. Yeah, it kind of ties a little bit from the previous discussion. Of this is that if if we are talking about in the in the case of what we were previously discussing, why would you risk? It's all about risk, right? So nothing. You could get sued for anything, right? And to me, there is you are increasing. I think your risk, Ed of the MLS by including a percentage that's in a field on the MLS, right? I think, you know, you, you may be a thousand percent, right? The brokers putting it, a, a, a commission on their websites, maybe a thousand percent, right? But would you, would you say, would you at least agree that by doing this method, right? By the MLS, even going into this world is increasing their risk. So other than say, other than other than saying, you know, just like we said before, just don't 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 even go there. Just stay away from it. It's it's the third rail. Don't do it. Are you are you as an MLS doing this with these concessions, increasing your risk? I think I think if the form agreement stay where there is sharing in the form agreement, then there is probably some additional risk by doing it, although I think it's tiny. I think as originally visioned, that form agreements would not have sharing in them at all. So go to a world where there's no sharing of commission, because here's the point, guys. You don't need to share. It's pointless. It's, it's a fool's errand. Don't do it. There's no upside, only downside. Once you take... Once you take offers of compensation off the MLS. See, they were beneficial on the MLS from the standpoint is it was transparent, it was clear, it was guaranteed, there were rules around it, there were some consumer benefits, which is what NAR argued of it on MLS. Look, we lost, get over it, we lost. Off MLS, it's a horrible idea. It's fraught with problems, right? As a buyer's agent, I have to make phone calls. As a buyer's agent, I have to go have a written, a separate written agreement with you, right? It's it's a there's no reason to do it at all. So I think in a world where broker sharing dies and offers of compensation die, there is zero risk in the compensation field. It is it's only there to the extent that there's mass broker sharing, and I think that's that's going to the dustbin of history because you're going to lose market share. So if you want to, you go through a form that does commission sharing against me. So as a listing agent, here's what I'm rolling in with. Hey, Rob, you want you and Sonny want to sell your house? I charge X percent. That's all I charge. 
you're going to pay me X percent. Here's the great services I'm going to provide you. Now, there's going to be buyers out there who are going to need help financing the fee that they're going to agree to pay their own buyer agent. So there's, there's a number out there that we don't know. But be ready, Rob, to absorb that in our offer. We can analyze that in setting our list price. We can accommodate that all kinds of different ways. But you're only paying me. And Rob, be really careful. If someone comes in here with a form where you need like a calculus degree to figure out what your commission is going to be, um, maybe the confused mind should say no, and you shouldn't sign an agreement like that. I think that's going to be the marketing shtick in the, in the future. And people who and agents who do not share are going to take lots of market share against the people who try to explain the old system. Mm. Um, and, and I think the market will fix this to the if the DOJ doesn't come in and do something to, to, to end it anyway. <laughs> Can't hear you. Rob, you're muted. Maybe that's why I got to talk so long. <laughs> you're muted, Rob. Sorry. I, you know, it sucks. It's like, we could go for two, three hours, actually. And, you know, we should think about doing that at some point in the future, right? But because I wanted to actually get into forms and because that's, but we may have to have you come back because we are, show. we are out of yeah. time. Um, but it, to sort of, sort of like tease that out. One of the things I, I wanted you to come talk about with us is there's so many, but was I'm, I'm about to publish an article by the time this goes live, it will probably be published. I think the forms are a vector of attack for any future lawsuits or any future liability. Because you met, you alluded to it a couple of times. So let's end with kind of that issue, which is when you have, and I think the term you use is 20 competing brokers getting in a room on a committee meeting and voting to decide what should and should not be on a form, you might have a problem, right? I think that uh, there's a, again, it's a risk. I'm not going to say it's an absolute problem, but does it increase the level of a risk if, if you as a broker are using a form that was designed by a bunch of competitors that continues a practice that we know now has been, you know, demonstrated in a court of law to be problematic. And I'm going to, you know, I'll probably end where we started, right? The definition of a conspiracy, right? Okay. An ag agreement or understanding between two or more persons exists when they share a commitment to a common scheme, Right. And again, I'm still at a complete loss, guys, to explain to me why do you need to make an offer of compensation and why do you need to share commissions with anybody? Why? Mm -hmm. No one's broken down to me why they would do that. What's the point? We already know the lending's not in negatively impacted. And, and so the why? answer is simple, Ed, because we have 100 years of, of industry tradition. Well, get over it. Change okay, no. So I, that, change the MLS. I love that. Agreed. Oh, you Agreed. Do, but here's the, the if, floor, if that's the thing, then there's... If, Ed, if that's the thing, then there's much more effective ways to just get over it. This isn't it. Well, changing the form, I think, is an effective way to get over it. No, no, I, I mean, yeah. like, the rules themselves. Like, you know, you talked about, like, NAR really could have made the code of ethics. California, you know, MLS, you can make your own private rules. There, there are things that could have been done. But that's, again, we're running out of time, right. so we're going to have to save that for the next time. I right. did want to, though, bring out, so let me end with this one question. If you are a broker, because these forms are getting rolled out right now, Right, with the August deadline, we know that the state associations have promulgated these forms. A, a reader sent me, I think, the latest draft of the California Association form. I'm like, I, 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 I don't have the math degree to understand some of the provisions here. That's a whole separate thing. You're probably familiar because you're CRMLS. But the question is, these forms are being rolled out. If I'm a broker, do I want to use those forms? So the advice that I would give, again, yeah. I, I'm a lawyer. I'm not your lawyer. That's right. Ask your lawyer, your lawyer, please. I'm, I'm not your lawyer either, Greg's, you <laughs> <Right>. know. <laughs> right. no, no, but the advice I would give is honestly, go seek the counsel of a good antitrust lawyer before you use a form that was created in a committee environment that has could, offers yes. of compensation mm. and sharing in it. You I better couldn't go, agree more. You better or know how to use the form, like the CA form as an example. There is a way you can use the form and completely stay out of trouble. Right. Right. Don't don't put something into the sharing box at all. Right. Right. Don't share. That is an option under that form. So that form can be used effectively if that's the practice you instigate in your brokerage firm. Right. So, so these forms that I've seen usually are now have options in them. So if you select the option where you don't share commission at all, 
you're probably in a safer place than 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 doing the continued share. But if you're going to do the sharing, I strongly recommend you talk to your antitrust attorney and figure out how that may play for you. I lied. That wasn't the last question. This is the last question, at least from me. Correct my <laughs> other ones. Just to be perfectly clear, state of Colorado, right? In Colorado, all of the forms are created by the state real estate commission. Okay. And those forms specifically allow for compensation and commission sharing. Okay. Although there's an option not to offer any as well, right? It's like A, B, or C, A, right. right? In that scenario, is it your opinion that brokers in Colorado do not face any antitrust liability because they're using the state-approved and state-mandated forms? I happily don't have a Colorado license, so I get to not answer <laughs> that question. Um, but what I'm going to say is don't think you, about this purely from a risk perspective legal Look mm -hmm. at it from a risk perspective of how many listings are you going to lose in a competitive marketplace when someone walks in and does not share and explains the simplicity of that. And keep in mind, guys, remember, that commission rate is half or less, right, of what your competitor's doing, right? How many listings are you going to oh, lose sure. because sure. you try to keep the old way of doing it, right? That, sure. that, that I think, will, will win the day. Sure. Let me let me end with let, this. Uh, if and we can go out, I guess. Yeah, is, uh, again, I could talk to Ed yeah, for four too. hours, but I'm I'm gonna shut up now. So we but can. But if, if anybody hasn't said this, Ed, uh, you know, just thank you so much for. I know this is a lot of time extra that you've been doing over the past yep. year or so. I can imagine the nights you've been doing and everything else. But I mean, man, you know, I was kidding about you becoming a rock star in this business because of all the things you've been doing. But really, from if anybody hasn't told you, thank you so much for absolutely for really being on this and other podcasts and all the work you do and all the conferences and everything. I mean, yep. it does. It is very well received. It's very well welcome. And uh, kudos, kudos on you, man. I mean, really. Uh, yeah. I appreciate it. A lot of thanks also goes to Art Carter because you notice yeah. there's not a lot of CEOs that would let their general counsel get out here uh, <laughs> like this and speak True. things. And so I True. do appreciate uh, the True. freedom he gives it and the love he has for the industry yep. uh, to make sure some some good stuff uh, get, gets out there. So. Nikea, you can learn from Art Carter. Let Katie Johnson on our platform to explain all the ways in which I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> We got to run, everybody. Right. <laughs> Thanks, Ed. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.